Orthodoxy is the version of faith. Orthodox look, Orthodox outlook, Orthodox way of life, Orthodox goal of life, Orthodox mind, Orthodox bent of mind. Being Orthodox, we must have Orthodox conviction. Join His Grace Yakub Mark Elias as he shares main faces of Orthodoxy in Learn Orthodoxy with Mark Elias. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one true God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of our Lord and God and Savior be with you all. Dearly beloved in our Lord, with prayer, depending on God and His grace, we are humbly trying to give a small talk in English on Orthodoxy and Oriental Orthodox Churches. This is mainly due to the demanding request from our youngsters in the English-speaking world from different parts of the Orthodox world. This will also be beneficial to all those who are interested to know, to learn and to practice Orthodox faith and practice. The word Orthodox is a combined word. It's a combination of two Greek words, Ortho and Doxa. In Greek, Ortho is comes from Orthos which is a prefix, which means right, true, correct, straight, and upright. Ortho means right, true, straight, correct, and upright. Doxa is glory, to praise, opinion. Doxa comes from the Greek word dokein, which means to feel, to see, to think. The words decent and doctrine are also connected with the word dokein. So orthodox means right praise a right glory, a right worship. Orthodox faith is the right faith. Orthopraxis is the right practice. Orthodox church is the right church. Having right faith, right doctrine, right worship. In Syriac, Orthodox means Trisai Shubhod Etho. In Malayalam, he says Tudi Chowagapata Vishwasam. Stuti Chowagapata Sapha, Stuti Chowagapata Arathana. If we search, we can find more than 90 words which begins with the prefix ortho. For example, orthopedic, orthodontic, orthostatic, orthocender, orthogenetic, orthophoria. The Orthodox Christian churches are divided into two families. First, the Oriental Orthodox family, and second, the Occidental or Byzantine Orthodox family. In the Oriental Orthodox family, there are six churches Armenian Orthodox Church. Coptic or Egyptian Orthodox Church, Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Eritrean Orthodox Church, Indian Orthodox Church, and Syrian Orthodox Church. There is perfect communion in between these churches. In the Occidental or Byzantine 
Eastern Orthodox churches belong all the Orthodox churches other than the six Oriental Orthodox churches, mainly Greek Orthodox Church, Russian Orthodox Church, etc. Oriental Orthodoxy is the faith of the Eastern Orthodox Church which holds the faith of the undivided church. That means the faith of the church before the first division in the Christian world which occurred in 451 AD with the Council of Chalcedon. We hold the faith of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. One holy Catholic and Apostolic are the four marks of the Orthodox Church. The Oriental Orthodox Church holds only three councils are ecumenical. They are the first council of Nicaea in 325 AD, the first council of Constantinople in 381 AD and the first council of Ephesus in 431 AD. The Byzantine Orthodox churches consider seven councils are the, as the ecumenical councils. We Oriental Church, Orthodox Church, reject the dogmatic definition of the Council of Chalcedon, held in AD 451 in Chalcedon, on the nature of Christ. Hence, Oriental Orthodox churches are also called Old Oriental Churches or Miaphysites or Non-Chalcedonian Churches. We reject that label Monophysites mistakenly or misunderstandingly given to the Oriental Orthodox Churches by the Western and Byzantine Orthodox Church. We are not Monophysites, but we are Miaphysites. We Orthodox ourselves reject the description monophysites as inaccurate, having rejected the teachings of Nestorius and Eutychus. This misunderstanding was during the discussion between the fathers of the Greek East and the Latin West. Latin fathers, not well versed with the Greek language, misunderstood the word Mia, that is one, as mono, which means single. Greek fathers were of the conviction that Jesus was of one nature, which included both Godhead and manhood. The Latin fathers was of the opinion that Jesus was in two natures, projecting sometimes the Godhead and sometimes the manhood. So the difference was on the nature of our Lord. The Greek fathers, Oriental Orthodox fathers, they, were, they held that Jesus is of one nature, having both Godhead and manhood, whereas the Byzantine fathers, they held Jesus' nature was two and Jesus was in two natures. Different was, difference was between of one nature and in two natures. Dialogues towards restoring communion between these two families are progressing which started from the middle of 20th centuries. Contributions from our church through eminent personalities like our father Dr. V. C. Samuel, His Grace Dr. Paulos Magrigorios and Reverend Father Dr. Cam George. Among these, the contribution of 
late Reverend Dr. V.C. Shaumil, through his study, research, and book entitled The Council of Chalcedon Reconsidered, was special and unique, which paved the way to the restoration of the communion between the two families when it becomes possible in the future. Both parties have come to a conclusion that the difference was more of terminological than theological. The difference was more terminological than theological. Both meant the same. Now they realize. Now we are waiting for the general consensus and agreement between the Holy Episcopal Synod of the two families. All the Oriental churches are autonomous and autocephalous. We know auto means self. Nomos in Greek means rules. Autonomous means having its own rule, that is, self-ruled. Autocephalus means having its own head. In Greek, kephalion means head or chapter. The autonomous and autocephalus means church having its own rule and its own head. Our Malangara or Indian Orthodox Church has our own head from our Malangara. We have our own rule and constitution abiding by the constitution of our land. Our head is from our own land, not from Syria or from England or from Rome or not from any other parts of the world. We members of the Malangara Indian Orthodox Church are proud of being part of the Oriental Orthodox family. We are proud that our church is planted in Kerala by the blessed apostle Saint Thomas in 52 AD during his second visit to India. You may be wondering when I say he, during his second visit. The scholars say Saint Thomas had his first visit to northern part of India near Takshashila around AD 40, where King Gondophorus was the ruler. There are archaeological proofs proving that King Gondophorus was ruled there. And we have traditional songs connecting King Gondophorus and St. Thomas. Immediately, like all other apostles, St. Thomas was also called back to Jerusalem for the funeral of Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of, Mother of God, Theotokos, the God-bearer. But, the community which was founded by St. Thomas there near Takshashila was totally devastated because of the foreign invasions. We Orthodox are apostolic and episcopal. Orthodox faith being the right faith is the true version of faith. Roman Catholic Church, though apostolic and episcopal, have many deviations from the true faith. The Protestants have many diversions from the original faith. And the Pentecostal, sectarian and independent groups, they are distorted and perverted. It is very clear from 
the letter of Saint Paul, the Hebrew, chapter six, verse four, that if anyone deviates or diverts or distorts or perverts from the original faith, it is impossible for them to be brought back to repentance. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4 For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Once enlightened means baptized. And have tasted the heavenly gift means and partake in the Holy Eucharist. And have become partakers of the Holy Spirit means have anointed the Holy Moron. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they have crucified again for themselves the Son of God and to put him to an open shame. So we must be very careful not to abandon the Orthodox faith. Pray that we may get discernment to know between the true version of faith and deviations, diversions, distortions and perversions. We should be well aware of our Lord's teaching which we read in Saint Matthew chapter 24 verse 24. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, and the elect. See, I have told you before. In 23 we read, chapter 24, verse 23 we read, Then if anyone said to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Our Lord has warned us well before. We read in St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 6, Beware of, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, leaven being false teaching. We should also remember the exhortations given by St. Peter and St. Paul. We read in 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. Especially 16 in English. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some of things are hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scripture. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction. The untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they all do also the rest of the scriptures. So beware of those who twist, those who are untaught and unstable in faith. We should also be well aware of the exhortation given by Saint Paul in Galatians chapter 6 
chapter 1 verses 6 to 9 which we read which we sing before the the reading of the epistle of Paul the holy kurbana Paul the blessed Paulus liha thanyan chol kate ni chal kate ni devam Paulus liha thanyan chol kate ni devam Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 to 9 I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel which is not another but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed as we have said before. So now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. We should understand that there are so many gospels, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel. So we must be aware of the gospel which is right and which is perverted. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach you any other gospel than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. The Orthodox Church which is the body of our Lord, is an organism, not an organization. We should understand the difference between organism, which is a body, and organization, which is an, <clears throat> which is an institution. Church is an organism, not an organization. But the organizational setup is coming to the front and destroying the element of the organism. We should hold all the aspects of the early apostolic church, which was a praying church, which was a caring church, which was a sharing church. They had everything in common. They lived as one body all the members being organs of the same body. We read it very clearly from the Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 27. And they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine and fellowship, the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and all had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. They had everything in common, common prayer, common table, common wealth, everything. They were selfless, they were not selfish. Are we selfish or are we selfless? Are we the members of the body of Christ or are we independent? Do we care for others, especially who are weak, poor and needy? We should also emphasize the threefold ministry of our Lord, teaching, preaching and healing. Teaching the law teaching the different aspects in the right sense, 
different aspects in the Old Testament, preaching the kingdom of God, then automatically healing comes. We should follow this threefold pattern of Christ's ministry, teaching, preaching and healing. We should keep in our mind three important words, which are the qualities of God and godly people. We should be holy, we should be perfect, we should be merciful. On the Oriental Orthodox, the Father has emphasized these things. We should be holy, we should be perfect, we should be merciful. If we ask you to tell you the, the most important quality of God, what will be answered if I say, fill up the gap, God is dash. Most of you may be filling with the word, God is love. No, God is holy. Our Lord has never said, I am love. God has said, I am holy. We read in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 44 and 45. The sum and substance is, be holy, because I, your God, am holy. Be holy, because I, your God, am holy. When our Lord, during his ministry on earth, taught us to be perfect and merciful, like our Father in heaven. In Matthew 5.48, we read, He be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. What is perfection? Perfection of all virtues. Humility is the mother of virtues. Love is the perfection of perfection. Then what is the perfection of love? Perfection of love is loving enemies. That was taught by our Lord on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We should forgive the ignorance and we should bless the ignorance. Forgiveness of forgiving ignorance and blessing ignorance. The first ignorance is I G N O R A N C E. The next ignorance is I G N O R A N T S. Forgive the ignorance and bless the ignorance. That is the perfection of love. So we should be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Then in Luke 6 36, we read. Our Lord demanding us to be merciful. He be merciful even as your heavenly Father is merciful. What is mercy? Mercy is love set in motion and expressed in action without any discrimination even unto the enemy and thankful and evil. Mercy is Love set in motion and express in action without any discrimination even unto the enemy and thankful and the evil. Okay. So we should be holy, we should be perfect, we should be merciful. These are all God's qualities and these are to be given through His grace as gift to His beloved. So let us pray that God may grant us through His grace, His holiness, His perfection and merciful. And when our Lord comes at the end with his angels and the holy horse, he'll be separating the good and evil. The good will be on his right side and the wicked will be on the left side. And then 
those who are on the right side will be all those who have been merciful holy perfect merciful we read this in detail in st matthew chapter 25 verse 31 following i was hungry you fed me i was thirsty you gave me a drink i was naked you clothed me i was sick you visited me i was in prison you visited me i was a stranger you received me then those who are on the right the righteous people will say lord we have never seen you hungry or thirsty or naked or stranger or sick or in prison then the lord will say verily verily i say unto you what you have done for the little one is done for me verily verily i say unto you what you have done for the little one is done for me he will say to the wicked on the left side verily verily i say unto you what you have not done for me is not what you have not done for the least of my brethren is not done for me so we should be having mercy and compassion on the poor and the needy the orthodox church emphasizes on the church and the ministry and sacraments we should have a sacramental life for the sacramental life we need the <coughs> the holy orders and also the church christ is coming to seek and save the true believers having true repentance the true believers having true repentance will be very few at the end in luke 18 7 and 8 in luke in 18 8 our lord said will the son of man find faith on earth when he comes he is coming to seek the true believers with true repentance in luke 18 7 we read look 187 and shall god not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him though he bears long with them god is coming to save the truly repentant the elect who cries day and night the orthodox church or the orthodox fathers always emphasize the true faith the true worship the true repentance take the example of the right side thief who repented he confessed when you come in your kingdom remember me o oh lord in that confession we can see true faith true worship and true repentance prayer fasting and repentance we need to keep the sacredness and the secretness of prayer fasting and uh, alms giving it is very clearly a return in st matthew chapter 6 verse 1 to 8 we should realize the mode of orthodox worship is repentance not of entertainments we have to keep our repentance attitude always while our jesus was on earth he was crying and praying for the grace of god father that he may not fall into any sin our lord was sinless yet he was crying we read in hebrew 5:7 jesus in his days of flesh offered up prayers and supplications with the vehement cries and tears to him who could save him from death and he was answered because of his devotion jesus was sinless yet he was crying and praying for 
the grace of Father that he may not fall into sin. So sin, repentance has got two aspects. The first part of repentance is crying and praying for the forgiveness of sin. And the second part is crying and praying for the, for the grace that we may not fall into, into sin again. So let us lead a life of true faith, true worship and true repentance. Let us try to be the real believers so that our Father may accept all of us as His beloved children so that we can together pray, calling Him our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us sins and debts as we have forgiven debtors. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are young women, blessed is the womb of Lord Jesus Christ. O Virgin Saint Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners. Never to our times, the hour of death. Amen. Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you. The love of God the Father, the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved listeners, please pray for me that I may lead a holy, orthodox life. I am also praying for all of you that you may be given the grace that you may be able to lead a holy, orthodox life. Amen.